Hey, welcome back to another exciting video. So, WWDC 2025 just wrapped up. And this time, Apple truly delivered a developer-focused developer conference. Honestly, I have been following Apple's WWDC for years now. And this might be the most exciting and genuinely surprising event I have seen in quite a while. Some pretty crazy announcements, some pretty controversial ones too. And let's dig into this. I have got a lot of thoughts. Okay, first thing first. Yes, we all have seen those memes by now. Apple introduced Liquid Cloud in iOS 26 and people can't stop comparing it with Windows 7's arrow. It's pretty hilarious. All jokes aside though, I actually think visually it doesn't look too bad. Although I completely understand the skepticism and issues people raised about readability and accessibility. It is funny because everyone becomes an accessibility expert whenever Apple does anything questionable. But yeah, honestly, accessibility wise, it's not that terrible. My real complaint isn't with this liquid class. It is actually the painfully slow animations which the beta has right now. I know in the prod version, this might be much better. But again, showing these kind of glassy effects where the transition of your background changing, I know how much energy it can consume of your device it will be hard on your gpu it will be hard on your cpu a lot of graphic processing is done showing that ui i don't know how much this will affect your battery life of your devices it will go down they might have to optimize it a lot but they are on the one side they are also improving the chipset on the devices and the other side like the ui in itself is taking a lot of that resource the future which apple is going for right now they're thinking 10 years ahead in time when we'll be wearing the glasses like this and once you have an ar glass like this transparency ui is the only UI which makes sense. You do not want to block user's vision with a colored button or a button which does not show you what's behind that. So this kind of glassy interface is kind of their bet on the future. But yeah, hope uh, they smooth this out before the actual release. Otherwise, the reduce motion mode will become like my best friend again. And the keyboard. <laughs> Who asked for those weird looking rounded corners? Apple, seriously, like I really hated the keyboard design for now. Again, I don't know if this will get fixed in the release or not, but yeah, let's see. Now let's actually actually steer towards the good stuff because despite all the memes Apple dropped some genuinely game changing developer focused updates this year. For starters, let's talk about something nobody saw coming, an official Apple made Docker alternative completely in Swift. Like wait what? Apple just casually drops an open source Swift written containerization tool for running Linux containers natively on our M series? Wow, honestly, this feels huge. Remember early M1 days when Docker was painfully slow? Apple basically came in and fixed this once and for all with a native Swift solution. Wow, I mean, that's genuinely impressive for me. And this isn't the only big developer focused push. Apple also surprised everyone with a full web GPU support enabled by default on Safari. Honestly, I didn't expect them to embrace web gaming this fast, considering how restrictive they have traditionally been with PWAs and browser capabilities. I really feel they are finally loosening their grip a little bit here, which is fantastic news. It opens a completely new paradigm for you to build things. It feels like your browser is becoming kind of an an operating system in itself because the doors to your GPU, CPU, everything is completely open. And now speaking of games, the new game port toolkit, which is GPTK3 with multi-frame generation and performance optimizations, super impressive stuff. But I'm actually skeptical about real adoption. Let's see how many AAA devs actually pick it up. Personally, the website, web GPU and WASM feels way more promising to me in the long term. But wait, we gotta address the elephant in the room, Apple and AI. WWDC 2025 brought some much needed but embarrassingly late AI announcement for Xcode, these are so far behind. They finally added the option to load third-party AI models directly in Xcode. Sure, good move, but come on Apple, it's mid-2025. Cursor, windsurf, visual code, all Jetpack IDs have already been doing this way smoother for ages now. And here's another major AI letdown. Apple's foundation model are finally available as APIs. I, as a like an app developer, super excited. Now I do not have to make any external API call. I can just use their foundation model directly on device but the thing is the models aren't actually that amazing what can be the option is you either ship huge models with your app like my app will become four five or six gbs because i will be pushing the model in itself which can be used right but nobody is going to download my app or i have to settle with apple's mediocre one which is the foundation model or the third option is which i am currently doing using these cloud-based api calls
balls i mean all options are honestly kind of not great at this moment and apple seriously needs to figure this out i mean imagine if they would just allow us to share models across apps for example if i download one model once uh, all the other apps can just use that model how hard it is it not each app should have their own model packaged into the app or maybe they can make an app store for downloadable models where you can download whatever model is you are interested in and these apps start using that which i am currently doing in my mac i have the lm studio i download the models like deep sea car one and then i have a server running i can connect all the other apps to that server locally uh but now nah, apple thinks differently for better or worse and let's talk quickly about siri it's 2025 ai has moved leaps and bounds everywhere else and apple is still stuck figuring out how to improve siri i mean i don't remember when was the last time i asked siri anything fedri himself literally admitted their first gen ai architecture didn't cut it are we seriously still waiting on decent conversational functionality because apple couldn't properly plan ahead honestly it's painful to see them this far behind when the solution has been staring them right in the face for literally like many years now apple also quietly announced they are retiring rosetta to support after mac os 27 although they will keep some legacy support for games honestly shocked that it even lasted this long given how smooth Apple Silicon has been since the day one. But still, it feels like an end of an era here. Oh, and UI wise, I almost forgot. Finally, Apple made notification left aligned. Phones are becoming huge. Centering notifications have never made any sense on newer devices. So yeah, kudos to Apple. It only took forever to realize phones are getting bigger. And yeah, notification left aligned made sense. Also, another huge win for Swift fans. They are improving interoperability with JavaScript, C++ and Java and now officially supporting WebAssembly exports. So Swift for web though, let's just hope they don't rewrite their web apps again. All said, it genuinely felt like Apple got serious about their developers this year. Despite the obvious UI trolls and slow AI moves, Xcode still desperately needs ground up improvements. Apple still needs to properly embrace and encourage newer dev experiences beyond their own tools. And their AI integration really needs to catch up big time. But in fairness, many of their moves like containerization stuff, web GPU by default, decently better Swift support across languages actually impressed me way more than I thought. Also the foundation model, no matter how slow it is right now, it will improve with time, but it still gives me a hope that all of my apps can have a native LLM baked into it. Apple dev experience is unique in its highs and lows. It's spatial and frustrating all at once. I love Apple products, but I honestly can't remember the last time I was so excited about Apple as a developer. And if you ask me, that's a pretty big deal. So tell me, what did you think? Is Apple getting it right or am I being just overly optimistic here? Drop your comments. I'd love to see your takes below, but before you sign up, out, huge thanks to today's sponsor, my own app Post Handle, a powerful tool that helps you effortlessly create viral videos in seconds for TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube. I have personally built and used Post Handle to quickly generate engaging content across my social platforms, and it has genuinely saved me countless hours. So, if you are looking to step up your short form video game, Post Handle has all the easy use features AI driven templates, trending clips, and music you will need consistently to go viral. Check it out, link is in the description. Give it a try and level up your content creation immediately also if you need any support i am available just on the corner there's a button you can just click on it and i'll be replying to your queries that's all for this video folks i'll keep an eye on these apple updates and let you know by making these videos keep building awesome stuff keep innovating keep learning and as always see you in the next one till then take care keep coding bye bye